Hello dear colleagues, now I'm going to show you how to perform the slide agglutination test, also known as the Gruber type of agglutination. Agglutination is a type of uh, serological reaction, actually antigen-antibody reaction, where the antigen called agglutinogen is a part of a larger structure, usually it's an integral part of a bacterial cell or another type of cell, like let's say the O antigens that are lipopolysaccharides of gram-negative cell wall. Uh, antibodies are called agglutinins, so there is a compatibility between the antigen and antibody and they form complexes. Uh, as each antibody has two antigen binding sites, each antibody is able to catch two antigen molecules, that means to uh, attach to two different cells, while each cell will have the same molecules of the same antigen, so uh, that may be called by many antibodies. So in the end there will be a lattice, a structure which contains a lot of antigens and antibodies, and in the end the lattice may become so large that it could be visible by naked eye, and these structures are called agglutinates. Well, this reaction, the formation of the lattice, uh, depends on the presence of electrolytes. So agglutination cannot become visible in distilled water. This is important, so when uh, we use the regions, they should not be in distilled water, they should be in sand. Now, uh, let's have that example. Um, here is a pure culture of E. coli, Shurichia coli, which uh, you know is a normal flora of our intestinal tract. However, there are specific serotypes that are called EPENC, Enteropathogenic Escherichia coli. These uh, strains are uh, pathogenic, so they do not constitute a part of the normal flora. The only difference between the normal Escherichia coli and the EPEC are their antigens. So in order to prove the presence of an antigen, we need to use specific antibodies. So in these small vials, there are antibodies against those uh, enteropathogenic uh, serotypes. These are anti-O26 antibodies, anti-O55, anti-O86, and anti-O111. There will be five slides. On this slide, I will add a drop of saline, sterile saline. And on the other slides, there will be a drop of different serum. Anti-O26, anti-O55, well, I'll need a little bit more. Anti-O86 serum. And anti-O111. Next, I need to start the burner, sterilize the loop by holding it first in the lower part of the flame where it's cooler and then holding it vertically in the upper hotter part of the flame until the wire turns red. Then it must be cooled down by pressing into the agar and then we'll take some of the pure culture. First I'll start with the negative control with the saline. So spread the bacteria near to the drop and then start mixing. Okay, you need to do the such circular movements for at least several seconds, preferably 20 seconds, but sometimes even less. You see, the, the drop remains um, quite unclear and turbid. So this is not 
agglutination. This is a negative reaction. In a positive reaction, there should be some small particles visible, like very, very fine grains, but also the drop should become clear. This is totally cloudy. Okay, then we need to sterilize the loop again in order to kill the rest of the bacteria on the wire. This is the O111 serum. So here we place the pure culture, gradually start mixing. Okay, I think it's obvious. This is the agglutination. The, the drop is quite clear. Probably it will become uh, even better after, let's say, a minute or so. There are fine grains. Okay, don't forget to burn the loop. So you can see the difference between the negative reaction, the negative control, and the positive, where the drop is clear, and there are grains. Of course, I need to go on and do it with the other drops as well. First, I need to sterilize the loop, of course. This one stays cloudy. It looks negative at first glance. This is also quite cloudy and without fine grains. And one more. The drop remains cloudy, a typical negative reaction. Once again, let's show you the difference between a negative and a positive reaction. So you saw uh, this rubber type agglutination leaves just several seconds. Okay, so here we had the five grains only here in the drop with the serum against all 111. That means our serotype of E. coli has been all 111 and this should be reported as an enteropathogenic strain. So the respective measures and therapy should be started. Thank you very much for your attention.